Thank you, Lord. You are good. Amen. Walk with God. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray for a new fire in everyone's heart. It's Friday evening. Thank you for those who are here. God bless you. Those who are on their homes may receive the fire of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus and become effective for God's holy kingdom in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God is good. Sometimes you underestimate your enemy. You need to be careful to underestimate your enemy. You can take your seat. Thank you. Sometimes you underestimate your enemy. We all do that. I do it as well. You can never underestimate your enemy. Never, ever. Amen. The biggest enemy in the church of Je- in, 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 among God's people, the church of Jesus and among God's people in the old, the olden days, Old Testament and New Testament. The biggest enemy, would you consider as a weak one, was Jezebel. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament. But Jezebel is hiding herself and are very sophisticated. And you don't see her. She blended in with the constitutions of this world as a cover-up and mess up the purpose of God for the people on the earth. You hear what I say? At the Old Testament, you know, who thought that a mighty prophet, John the Baptist, could lose his head because of a little woman? A girl that danced, a young girl, maybe more or less 18, 19 years old, that impressed her evil father, Herod, in his drunken state. And said, you can ask me anything, even half the half of my kingdom. And she went to her evil mother and asked her, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Who killed John the Baptist? Who took the mighty prophet's head? A young girl and her evil mother. And a very compromising, wicked father who is not worthy to be called a man. A Ayyab. Never underestimate your enemy because a young girl can mess you up. The mighty prophet Elijah slaughtered the Baal prophets. But when the woman Jezebel was on his trail, he fled for his life into the desert and he was scared. This was the man who slaughtered the Baal prophets, who challenged them with fire, who called on God and fire came down. Got scared of a woman. Not for nothing. The biggest enemy of the church of Jesus today and the biggest enemy in the olden days in the Old Testament was none other than Jezebel. You see the mighty, the strongest man ever on the planet, Samson. The strongest man on the planet ever got destroyed by an evil woman, the Lilla. And he lost his eyes. But God was faithful to him. And you wonder sometimes what will happen to such women. It looks like in this life they're coming away with what they do. The instruments of Satan. And they will get their judgment. Today the world is filled with Jezebels. The Lilas. That trick the men of God. With the evil motives. And snare them. And take out their eyes like they did with Samson. Samson made a couple of mistakes. He trusted Jezebel. You can never trust Jezebel. She got the secret out of him. In the way that Solomon says, a woman, a, a nagging woman is like a dripping tap, tap. A nagging woman is like a dripping tap. She went on and on and on and on that even the strong man Samson gave in. To what she wanted. She wanted the secret covenant. The secret of the covenant between Samson and God. And she got it. And she destroyed him totally. And took his eyes.
But God was faithful to Samson. He repented. He worked like an animal. He worked like an ox. But eventually he was standing between two pillars. And he had, he had, he did, he had his ministry fulfilled by destroying the Philistine nation. Give God a hand for that. Amen. So we got people to look up to. Examples that went before us. And the Bible says everything is written up in the Bible. So we do not make the same mistakes that they've made. So we can become wise when we read God's word. These examples were written up for me and you. So we don't make the same mistake. But today, the people of the Western world, the modern day man and woman, are so sophisticated. The most sophisticated people group ever on the earth. And um, the Lord laid the USA on my heart, and that's a prophecy for the USA. Previously, they've been a, full, a, a, a role model nation to show the world how to do missions and how to do good to other nations. But they've become so sophisticated, which is not wrong. You go to the USA today, it's the most sophisticated nation you can go to. And um, in the world's eyes, they are amazing, excellent, the most successful nation on the planet. But in heaven's sight, as they are so sophisticated in everything that they do, they're the most sophisticated sinners as well. Because they made sin to look attractive and to look acceptable, even in the sight of God's word. Because the USA's preachers has become sophisticated in their compromise and the twisting of the word of God. That's not nice for me to say that. You say, Pastor, you don't like the USA. I love the USA. I love the people in the USA. I think it's an amazing nation. But according to the standards of God, they fall apart. They fall to pieces. And if the USA go, or go on the way, they go on. In a couple of years... There will be nothing. The enemies would have overcome them completely. There will be nothing. And that's exactly what Satan wants. Because previously the USA was a leading nation. Even sending out missionaries to all the nations. And obviously that's why Satan hates them. And that's why Satan go for them and to deceive them in order to destroy them. Satan cannot destroy a people group, a nation, or a person or a family if he does not first deceive them. So before destruction com always comes deception. And the Bible says that before a fall, pride will always come first. Today the USA, they think that they're the greatest nation on the earth. Let me tell you, they are the most sophisticated nation on the planet. But also, they are sophisticated in their sin and their compromise. And that's a prophecy for the USA. They twisted God's word completely. And they call holy bad. And they call bad holy. And they call what was previously unacceptable in heaven's sight. They call the norm. And I, I'm concerned about them. Don't you think I judge them? But this is a warning to the USA. And to the preachers in the USA. Because the preachers in the USA became so became sophisticated compromises as well. They are, they've become people that tickle the ears of people. And soothe their ears with a compromising spirit. That's a message to the USA. And when I preach this, don't you think I don't love those people? Don't you think I don't like the USA? But again, if Satan wants to destroy me, he must first deceive me. And I've picked that up in my life, and I've been deceived a couple of times. And I have fallen hard a couple of times. I know what deception is, and I know what the devil's attack is. But I've learned from that, and I daily, on a daily basis I learn from that. Before Satan can cause you to fall, he first comes with deception. And that deception comes normally through Compromise. Compromise God's word. With foolishness. That's a strong word, I know. But I've got to warn those people. They are a great nation. But the enemy is going to overpower them completely if they do not wake up and return totally to God's word. Years ago, there was a movement in South Africa. Back to the Bible. 
Few people will remember that. I think it's the Gideons that was launching this, back to the Bible. Amazing. And one friend of mine, he had this, and his wife were buying stuff in pick and pay, or his wife was buying stuff in the pick and pay. And this young boy stood up on the pick and pay trolley, a, 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 really a toddler, and he shouted out loud for everyone to hear. And let me tell you, it was God. And he shouted to everyone in that pick and pay, back to the Bible. The people were stunned. They looked at him. And I tell you, I want to say to the whole world, South Africa, USA, UK, Australia, all the nations, back to the Bible. But the problem is that people take everything out of the Bible that suits them. And they apply that to God. But that what doesn't suit them, they throw away like the food that you ordered at the restaurant. And you don't want it anymore. It doesn't suit you. You throw it away. They've become like the people in the Bible, Revelation, Laodicea. You think you are rich, but you are poor. You're blind and you're miserable. Come and get the anointing from me so that I can anoint your eyes that you can see. I pray for the whole Western world because they're com full of compromise. And wherever they preach the gospel, they take the compromised gospel with. We pray that God will purify his church. Pray with me, Lord God. Purify your church globally in the name of Jesus Christ. Wash your church and cleanse your church with fire globally in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God of heaven, come with your fire and burn away the chaff and cleanse your church globally in the name of Jesus. Remove the compromise from our hearts in the name of Jesus. And let us be the chosen nation that carry your fire in the name of Jesus. Everyone give God a hand for this one. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Satan never God is a good God. He's always a good God. Whatever he does is good. And the outcome of everything that he does is always amazing. In Jesus' name, give your Lord a great hand. Amen. I pray tonight that you will have the same anger against sin that is in my heart and in the Lord's heart. Because mine comes from heaven. In Jesus' name. I hate compromise. Because I know what it does to the hearts of people. It rendered them powerless. Amen. You be careful of Jezebel. To the American people, I want to say that's been a great nation delivering so many, many, bring, uh, raising up so many, many great preachers like Billy Graham, um, A.A. Allen, and so many, many great people. But the church is going to lose their power and that nation is going to lose their authority with their compromise. And they will be like the other nations will be overpowered by their enemies. Up to now, they were the leading nation. They say the free leaders of the free world. They will not be that forever if they keep on with the compromising direction that they followed now at this point of time. Then the sophisticated things will come to nothing. Amen. We pray for mercy for that nation in the name of Jesus. And we want to remind God of the good things that they've done for God. The faithfulness in the past of great preachers in the USA. We pray that they will return there in Jesus' name. And they will stop compromising and return to where God wanted them to be. Like the preachers in the USA in the past. Who were mighty preachers, great revivalists, awesome people. And they were, they were moving mountains for God Almighty. We pray that the USA will return to that.